Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint step by step, fully explained, this really gorgeous, magical garden waterfall scene. I, you're really going to love it. If you check the description below, there's a link to our website where there's a bunch of extra information, including how to get the background coloring, how to use gridding methods to get the image on canvas. And also, just in case you want to do any of that, a traceable, in fact, two traceables, references all the stuff you need, extra information. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. He, uh, he coordinates all this mayhem <laughs> into a show where he makes sure that you can see all the angles and everything I'm doing using one of our many, many cameras. That way, you know what colors I'm mixing, you know what brush strokes I'm doing, you can see all the action. So you can duplicate this for yourself at home because that's really the whole goal. Even though I am personally looking forward to painting this today, like on just a personal, personal level, I'm kind of excited. I'm even going to like get really into like deep, deep, deep. Um, the whole goal is to get you guys to paint it. So <laughs> me aside, and I'm kind of ready to do that. You ready to oh, do yeah. that? I would say we have a whole bunch of folks here who are joining us from the Lifebook group, and they really enjoyed seeing you, uh, that you joining them in Lifebook. So they're all just saying, wing, hello. All right. Hi, I Lifebook. Hi, I, Facebook fam! I just, I just looked over there and saw a bunch of people chatting about it. Oh, it's such a good program. I'm really enjoying it very, 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 very much. So excited. All right. Okay. That's it. A bunch of fun. Okay. <laughs> but I am really excited to, to see everybody from Lifebook. That's a really tremendously awesome, fun art program. So I have my grid, as you can see here, already laid in. Again, that video is all on the website. It's a little weird and chatty, but... It does cover the procedure and you can see the basic thing. And what this does is it just lets me paint all my next layers in here and have real depth on the canvas, which I need for this type of effect. So this sort of beginning color, this what's called in a ground, is really, really helpful for what we're doing. Over here, I have a pretty expansive palette today. I'm excited to be able to use such a big palette. I have, this is my favorite, Nickel Tight Knit Yellow by my favorite version of that color. My favorite... My favorite company that, that makes it is Golden's Nickel Titan It. That's my favorite. But if you want to get that color and you're on a budget, uh, the Amsterdam Acrylics also have one, as does PBO. And if you did Acrylic April, you know that Abstract Acrylic from Sun the Air has one. So you don't have to worry about it. If you don't have it at all, that's okay. Just use the yellows that you have. You can use a limited yellow. It won't hurt you. Cad Yellow Medium, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Quinacridone Magenta, Cad Red Medium, Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue. If you don't have any Prussian Blue, you could just use the Thalo Blue. I have Thalo Green and Doxazine Purple, Mars Black, and Titanium White. So bigger palette than usual, but mostly because I want to play, if that makes sense. Because mm. I'm feeling playful. Yeah, it does. Very, very playful. You know, whenever you, whenever you talk about the grid, I just hear Flynn <laughs> talking about us all going into the grid from Tron. <laughs> so i'm gonna uh open this up with a number eight bright cambridge what this is is a mix of boar bristles and synthetic filaments and so that's going to give me a really really good result and i'm gonna start blocking a couple things in so one of the things i want to block in is i'm gonna block in what's going on with my fall and i like to start my fall interestingly enough with my prussian so i'm going to come in here it's a lot darker than you might think but I super like it. And I'm going to just paint all the stuff that is my waterfall kind of coming in with this Prussian blue to start. Because I want a very deep blue to begin what I've got going on. Everything will build up on top of this. But I need my one little coat of dark, dark blue. Fun for me. Just bringing that down here. I only bring this down to the waterline here where the green part of the waterfall begins you know where you can really see the green and the and the life in the water which i think is kind of exciting there we go isn't that fun yeah and then i'm going to come into here and i'm going to go ahead and bring a little line down and bring another little line down these will become like the little falls that happen here but we're setting them up to begin with there I'm not too worried about keeping my bridge in because I know that it rests on the rock. If you want to be just aware of where the bottom of it is, you can always come in and start the base of it with some black to just sort of hold your thought. 
this, I would almost call that like a place mark. Like I'm going to bridge here a little bit and bridge there a little bit, but I got to get a lot of painting in to do it. Hmm. So that's going to hold me for a minute. Now, once that is in, I think I'm going to begin my fabulous, fun background. And to do that, I'm going to take a little of my Diox and maybe a little of my Prussian. I love the combo of them together. And I'm going to get my white. And we're going to start making this distant sort of misty effect. And you're going to see me moving the brush in this very rough kind of texture. Need more white on there. So more white. All right, so see this little rough texture? There we go. Fun stuff. You can always get a little bit more of your blue on there and come in, and you just sort of are making a very romantic, distant mist. Mm, yeah. You know, or we're just saying, there's some stuff up here, and it's far away. You can't really see all of it. I want to bring this back a little bit into where I know I'm going to have a tree because I want the tree to layer over it. And look, it isn't like a perfect like little brushing. It's, it's very random. And I like that. Just building this up and getting that nice little misty effect. It's good to have a little mist effect on yeah. occasion. Waterfalls in the mist. Which isn't really that shocking because that's, that's where waterfalls tend to be. <laughs> Now these just... these these waters you have. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're troubled? Like a bridge over them? I don't know. I, I don't mean, know. I, I I think that they're mildly troubled. Maybe they're m slightly anxious waters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I think it's I th pretty peaceful. The whole piece is actually fairly restful. I think as an image. I think it is. You know, I really enjoy designing. This is one of my. This is probably in those spaces where like. People often ask, like, you know, how do you paint? How do you do your stuff? I would say this is more in keeping with what I've got going on. I'm just adding a little more blue. And as you can see, I'm just kind of pulling this over. And so that's just creating some depth. All right? When we layer this right here, you can see how it just pulls in and starts to just be cute and interesting and fun. All right. Now... Once I have that in, I think it's, I'm going to let it rest for a second, as you do. Hmm. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take a little bit of my alizarin and maybe some of my purple. And I'm going to come right here. And this is actually a very dark space, so I'm going to just start to build this up. And I'm going to do a similar thing over here. So this is my alizarin and my dots. And at the top of the hill, and maybe even coming down a little bit. I'm going to add the deep, the deep dark of what is this gorgeous tree up top. You know, because that's super fun. And I'm also letting the space above the waterfall kind of dry a bit. As they like to. Mm. Now where I have rocks, right? It's real fun for me to make a fun gray. So I'm going to get a little bit of my Prussian blue, maybe a little bit of my black into it and some white. And that should give me a gray. And so I can start laying in the basis of what's going to be my stone. A lot of shading goes on on the stone. I'm going to just bring this lighter color at the top because I know that I've got to, you know, shade it. I'm going to bring a little rock here maybe, like have that peeking out. I like painting rocks. Who likes painting rocks? Mm. I think everybody does. It's fun to paint rocks. There's so many layers in rocks. Even more than an ogre's. I'm going to bring this rock kind of back here. So we're really talking about these little stones that are there. And then this rock is super. I love this rock. Got to get the top of it. And I love how the green really helps me. Um, you know, that rock definitely says, I am a rock. Yes, it's very rocky. Like Dora would say, it's a rocky rock. Another place that I can kind of imply some rocks is right here coming. There's some stone that is being implied. I don't know. I think, I think Simon would say, I am a rock. A <laughs> little bit there. Putting them here and there. Maybe a little bit of rock there. And there is one here. I might need to do a tighter brush to get it, but for right now, it's okay. I can 
talk about it a bit. And then we'll see as the water starts to fall. Because yeah. the water will start to fall and then there will be. Now, after I get that in, I can come in with a darker. I'm going to take my blue and my black. It's much darker. And I can come underneath this and start to speak to the shadow that will be under this rock. You can see that I'm roughly breaking this in. A lot of painting, see me just brushing this around here, is about getting some of this roughly laid in. And then as you do that, and add a little bit of that dark color. I have to, to say that just tickles me. What? What you say? I have to speak to the shadow. <laughs> it's really, but it, you do. <laughs> you do. Though. I have to speak to the shadows. <laughs> it's important. And it's just, I'm like, Jared, it's that's, important. That's very cool. That's, I mean, when did you ever think in your professional life you were going to say, "I have to speak to the shadows"? I don't know. I've been speaking to the shadows since I was a kid, so <laughs> it's a pretty far gone conclusion here. <laughs> This is just validation. Of We're your just childhood. shadow whispers up in my family, right? We're just whispering to shadows, just pulling this in. I just want this to be sort of a dark value. I know I'll be pulling it up for rocks and things later, but it's just nice to kind of bring these high contrasts in so that later, you know, when we're talking about them, they will be there for us. Fun things. The lay in goes actually quicker than you might think. I love having all these crazy fun greens too. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green and just a smidge, a smidge of my burnt sienna. And I'm going to begin to lay in some of this deep forest space that's down here. That I've got to start talking about. Often fun for me. Now that green's almost like this. It's almost the same. It, it's almost the black. same. It's like, just a little bit brighter because in a painting like this, we are it's layering so dark. up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to bring a little of it into here in my rock and then between my falls because we've got to get it in there. Just trying to make sure I can right. see it. Now so. I can then come in and I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my phthalo green and I'm going to make it much more green as you can see here, right? And then here's the trick. I'm going to get a smidge of my cad yellow. And right here along that fall, you'll see me scuffle on the edge of my brush and downward the slight suggestion, the bare, like the almost an implication of this green. Leaves that are green. I'm going to come in and bring some of this in here, as you do. Even yeah. though I know I'm going to have all those flowers over it, it's just good to get it in now. Good to get it now. And this is one of those places where using the right um, pencil is super important. <laughs> because if you use the wrong one, you'll be feeling it about now. And I definitely think another layer of this there. So I'm going to take a bit of this and a bit of this. Always fun. And keep coming in here, creating those depthy layers that I know I'm going to have. They're just great to go for, depthy layers. And this is really honestly how I constructed this piece. It's just building up this, this space where I'm like, all right, here's, here's where the world begins. And you begin to just pull it all together. It's kind of cool where like the grid is still there, but then places like it's not still. That's kind of awesome. Isn't it? A little bit. Kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get more into my Prussian and I'm going to make sure that, that my fall is falling. Because the fall needs to fall, man. It does. Yeah. And I can always come in and get a little Prussian and a little purple. And I can do some amazing things where I can create these really deep value shadows like I'm brushing this back and forth right these fantastic deep value shadows that are going to just give so much back in the painting in a minute yeah these deep deep dark shadows really do add some important layers 
They, they do so much because you can't get the contrast coming up on them until you get those in. Mm-hmm. You know, like I can't get in, on this outer edge here where I know things in the painting are in depth. It's fun to, it's honestly fun to like deepen those colors. Hopefully you can see it deepening. But it is fun. I'm going to take some purple through here and I think uh, some of uh, uh, my alizarin. And I'm also going to build this because these plants are going to be built off of this. And so these little subtle changes, uh, sometimes to the camera eye, you may not notice, but to the physical eye, it's a huge deal. You, you can see the subtleties. It's just so ever, I mean, the, the blues and greens and the darkness is gorgeous, right? I'm going to get my green and my blue together. And I'm going to hint, hint just a bit of the white to begin talking about this little turquoise space. A little bit here. If you need more green, right, you just come into that on these, right, where we need a little more green. Mm. You can just come into that. I can always get some of my yellow. Look at that. And just start to talk about the little waters. And I do want a darker kind of turquoise at first coming down, down here. That I'm going to be, you know, building my water on. And it can be good to, in the middle here, add some depth with a dark color. Because it'll be the little bits of that popping between the white that are really going to build up the stream. This is one of those rare occasions where when you're painting and you're working, Again, I'm going to go into my thalo turquoise, which is my blue and my green, right? We've got our blue and the green. There we go. Blue, green, thalo turquoise, a little bit of yellow, and white. And we're going to start to come here. Now, see how I'm going to drag across on the edge toe of my brush? And then I'm going to just wiggle it out there. Just wiggle it out there. And then I'm going to bring this around and I'm going to wiggle it out here. Now, the, the brush strokes are super important there. They're critical. Look at this. Loosely to, mixed. Yeah, you're not over mixing that at all, are you? No. Now, can, just... can you pause and just show the other side of your brush so they can see? Ah, there we go. Let me go. Let me go jump to this camera and then so you can see there. See how much there's just you can roll it over and see. It's not mixed. It's just all in the bristles. And that's how she got that cool effect. I'm going to add a little more white. And you can see I'll just keep bringing this. So what I'm doing is I'm paying attention to the flow of the water. I know I've got a flow that will come around here. And then I've got some that will work out the edges. And that's really all I've got to do initially to get that worked in. Now I'm going to put this aside and I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush. Um, I like to get scratchy brushes, to be real honest, because they give me a lot of texture. You don't have to work so hard for the texture. You could do just any brush as long as you're fairly good at, you know, um, uh, controlling it. I'm going to come here and just make sure that this is a little bit of a crisper edge. Let's see here. I feel like that was in that ah, cusp of an edge. There it goes. That's what I was looking for. Gosh. Sorry, and guys. And this will be a little bit higher because that, that is, there's a little bit of rock that's carrying that up there, and so that's what's going on there. I just got to make sure that comes across here. Now, I think it's nice up here to have an almost a pink blush, if that makes sense. Makes sense to me. I, really makes sense I to understand you. the words you're saying. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little of my quinacridone. Let me mist my paint so it doesn't dry out on me. Because I put all my colors out, but you don't necessarily have to put out every color, you know, right off the bat. So let's just take a bit of that pink. And you can kind of see with the white. I'm going to come right here over the top of the fall. 
This is a lovely effect. And I'm going to use just the corner of the brush. Give me pushing up these little random misty textures, wiggling it back and forth, doing my brush work. Yeah. Doing the brush work. Yeah, that's, you know, that's what's really going on in a three hoop painting is we're doing brush work. We're doing maybe like three or four techniques. You know, we have uh, maybe some more time committed to the painting. That's, that's a lot of times the difference between the one hoop and the two hoop painting in the reality of art is more about just dealing with all of those little elements. Isn't that fun though, the pink coming up? I love the pink. Maybe put a little pink there. It just implies a, an effect that's going on that I enjoyed. And I did this without zinc. A lot of times, you know, you might go forward and you might add zinc to that to get it, but I didn't really feel like that was necessary. Now I'm going to take a little of my green and my Prussian blue. Because, you know, they go together. And we're going to come out from here. And I'm going to make this sort of distant. See, it's like almost in the mist. Yeah. And maybe another little. It comes up and it's just very light and far away. It's a foliage texture, right? Little implications of something and a foliage texture that's going on. So I'm not trying to tell like every bit of the story of that. I just want to tell that foliage texture. And the first bit coming down on the waterfall, right? Because I've got to get this in because the waterfall comes here and then this bush layers over it. And I'm good on the rock. I could work some of the rock right now before I put my waterfall in. So I could take some dark color right here. Making sure that that feels kind of dark. Wherever you've got a waterfall going, and I can even add some dark to my stone. Where the water is touching stone and making it wet, you'll know that you're going to want to deepen that. That's just a thing you have to know about waterfall painting. If you're waterfall painting. If you are. Now I've got my little turquoise here and I'm going to get quite a lot of white out right? because I want it to be very light and I'm going to begin the process of this part of the waterfall. I'm going to come across the top and then I'm going to come around. And I'm going to come back this way and pull that down to here. Can you guys see it going down? And this is how I begin to, to imply that there's areas where things hit a rock and have to change direction. It is one of my favorite things because this is what we're really talking about. So if I come right here from the top, and I go down a little bit, and then I come down like that. What does that tell you? Look at that go. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. There we go. And down, and down. Waterfalls begin to happen. They're so much fun. I'm okay. But they really are a ton of fun. I'm going to come right here. Right across, pretty far, and then begin this. And I leave that dark right there. So that where I've got to change direction or go around a rock like here, or come back across a rock like that, and I can always up. See, it's just the fall starts to come in. Now let's imply a little bit of the fall is happening here. We're coming across. What are y'all thinking about how crazy fun and easy it is to do falls? This is great. It really is. It's like magic in the, your own painting. It's just the best. Yeah, the, the brush strokes against the darkness is what really makes them so pop so nicely. It really is. And you've got to get that in there. 
you know, whenever people are like, how do you paint a waterfall? It's like, oh, well, you paint a big dark hole <laughs> first. It's very hard to verbally describe it. When people like ask me writing, I'm like, um, start with a big dark hole. And then you add these other bits in. So I'm going to come right here and tell a little bit of that story. Where you can see that the stone has changed the direction of what's going on there. And then I can come here. And I know I'm going to be talking about that. Now, I got this rock. And some stuff I've got to do here. And I've got to add some more like plants and things because the water is going to be all layery. So the first thing is I've got to get a little more going on my stone. So I'm going to take a little of my Prussian and a little bit of my black and get into that gray in varying values. So let's first start with that. And I'm going to. Now I'm just sort of tapping this brush, trying to talk about the stone, get some light, light, light. Maybe like right here, because that's where some light would be hitting it. And now I need to get into these weird bright greens that are going to pop right there. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo and get right into that. That's pretty bright. I'm just kind of tapping that little space in, right? It's like, like no, this little moss a lot of water. How did how did you choose your background color before you uh, gridded things in? So I didn't want to have pops of a contrast or something that was going to alter the harmony. I wanted something that was very calm and very harmonious. So I looked at those harmonies and I was like, what am I going to have a predominant amount? And I realized I was going to have a lot of green and blue throughout the piece. And that green and blue was going to help the bits of warm kind of reds and pinks sort of pop up. So I was like, that's where I've got to lean into it. That's where I've got to really, really get my, myself in there. I'm going to get a little of this right here. If you can see that into my, into my nickel tighten it. But if you don't have that, just go more cad yellow, right? And I'm not adding too much of it. I'm just trying to talk about little kisses. You know little kisses? Yeah. Little kisses. Kisses are lovely. And it's just sort of implied. And it's going to give us some nice stuff. And I like it when there's some nice stuff, you know, going on. I've got a little bit happening in this rock over here. So in this particular case, I'm going to get a little of my black and brown. That's a bit of a warmer rock little different than its friend across the way. And I'm going to brush over the top, leaving some of this cool kind of granite down. And you can see why my scruffly brush is my friend right now. Just giving me these little bits of rough dry brushed everything. If you need more value and shadow, you can always come back with a little bit of this dark value and make sure that you've got interest and contrast in things. Sometimes it's nice if I get a little moss so I can take a little bit of my cad yellow and my cad red, as you do, and then some brown. And I like to even talk about maybe a little bit of that lichen. And I'm just, you guys know how rocks get that orange little moss going on it? And that just pops in here. It's not a bright orange though, see? It's a muted orange. And that is going to help that rock feel like what its own space. And it will also tie it into this rock because this side has that weird lichen. It has the strange, strange lichen. Now a little of my green and blue. I'm going to just get a smidge, smidge of my wine into it. I know I've got all these wonderful, delicious um, flowers coming up over here. So it doesn't take too much, right, to give me what I'm going to need to get through that space. 
I also might want some of this. See how that kind of is just wow. You can see it's right there. And I'm going to just dry brush carefully this over everything. And that's just another little depth of plant life and directionality that I can speak to. Now I'm going to want to put my little rivulets back in. I'm going to get my blue and stuff and I'm going to make sure that I've got those implications of water coming from up here. I'll get into, I always like to wipe these brushes out because I don't like hidden water coming up and sneaking up on me. Just the beginning of that. Doesn't take a lot. The hint. The hint, it's a guess, it's a, it's a little thought. This rock needs some love in here, doesn't it? Yeah. And you'll notice again, I did the brown and black on that one, misting my paint so it's not dry. How's everybody doing? Really good. All right. Let's, you know, give our rock some personality. And then if I get a lot more white onto that, I can get a very light highlight. So maybe I can sit there and talk about that a bit. You can always add a little moss. I'm sipping my coffee. Are you sippings? I'm sipping my coffee. Add a little moss and begin the process of adding, you know, saying, hey, this is a Sometimes I, I, I fall into watcher mode and, and I'm just and like, you're like, I'm just watching. I'm just watching my wife paint, which is pretty relaxing for me just to come hang out and watch you paint for a little while. Yeah. It's not like, you know, the worst thing ever. No, that's a nice little hint of moss on our little rock, isn't it? We can do a similar thing. Now I'm looking because I'm going to I'm going to keep playing. There's no stopping me from playing. I'm going to do a similar thing right here. And maybe get a little of that yellow, because I think it'd be nice to have a little implication that this fellow has some moss, too. Because it's just, it makes those rocks feel kind of alive, kind of spectacular, kind of awesome. Now, I'm going to come here, and I, I know I've got the turquoise, so, but I want even more white into what I've got. And I'm going to... Bring this next layer with highlight down the fall. There we go, nice and bright. And right here, wherever you think the fall might like hit a rock, you can always make a little sort of splashy, splashy. splash. Yeah, because it goes splashy splash. You want to say splashy splash, splash, splash. You can. There's a little bit of the white there. Right, and then this can be right there. And you can see how just the contrast starts to make it really feel like that fall that it is. I'm going to get a little more white here. Get a little more white here. A 
little splash there. Because this rock would have a little splash around it. And then we can definitely add just a bit here. Look at that. This gorgeous, crazy, cool waterfall. It's all afoot. It's all happening. If you want to put anything back, you can just get some pressure and you just come in here and you can see. Great shading. Anywhere that you need some drama. Maybe the water is deeper. You know, a little bit just sort of hiding here. Highlight just part of that, not the whole thing. Not the whole thing, because you just want a little bit. A little bit all a flutter. Then up here, I'm going to take a bit of my purple alizarin, and I think even my magenta. And I'm going to begin to paint out this sort of like, Interesting little strange purple pink tree. Mm. It's going to be strange here. purple pink tree. It's a strange little purple pink tree. I'm going to just have little rough little foliage bits. And then when I want to just show some of it, I just get the smallest amount of white. And then I can come right here. Look at this. And kiss just some of the tops of the branches, pulling them out from the background. Right there. Oh, that happened. And then you've just got the beginnings of a, a nice dark little, come back with some purples. Beginnings of this little distant plant here. And it's just lovely. It looks like a mess up, but when you're away from it, it's like, wow, that was nice. Yeah, I like it. And then uh, sometimes I like to, I think I can do it, um, yeah, maybe I'll do it with my round. I'm going to get some of that similar color. I'm just trying to create little textural things. And what you can do is you can pick up little highlight bits of things that have sort of a structure. It doesn't all have to have a structure. You can pop in a structure, like a little number four round. Just getting those little highlights there. The leaves, just a few. You can always have it be more red. I can take a little bit of my crimson, uh, my magenta, and my lizarin. And I can come in and pull out deep values as well. I feel like you can find your tree anywhere you need to. There we go. A little bit of white in there. You guys see it now? Mm-hmm. Fun stuff. The next fun tree, and yes, there is a next fun tree, is this tree. I love that tree. And I think for that one, hmm, I'm give myself a little small controlly brush. I'm gonna be all controlling. Is that okay? Yeah, you can do that. All right. So uh, this is a number four, Cambridge. It's just number another bright, four. a smaller size. And so I'm gonna take my magenta and my cad. And that's the mix, the magenta and the cad. And 
And I'm going to begin to talk about just a little some of what's happening up here. Just with those two colors, it's like such pretty colors. Especially when they're mixed together. And you can see how pulling that deep red was quite striking for this to play against. And you're bringing these little branches down. They're little random shapes. That's what little branches do. They make little random shapes. Sometimes I like to wipe off the excess paint if it's too far up my brush. You know, and pull out little individual leaves like what we have here. So that this makes an interesting little shape. And then if I add a little more magenta into the mix, I can grab a bit of my yellow. And you don't want too much. But what you're doing is you're warming it just a smidge. So see how I'm working it through there? I'm picking up a little white to get some pink. And you're going to see a pop. See the pop? That's definitely a pop. Yeah, it'll pop. And I'm going to come on the top of this branch. So I'm going to look for places to... Create shape and form by popping the top. I'm just bring it back here. Maybe some of these higher leaves come back. Some of them come down here in a kind of dramatic fashion. They're a little bit dramatic. And you see me wipe off, and I'll get some more of my white on there. A little more yellow into it. There we go. Look at that. If you get too much of a particular, like, loosely mixed thing, just work it in. Just find mm. a space for it. You'll... You'll see it. I'll see it. We'll all see it. Beautiful little, wonderful, colorful bush. It's so pretty. So nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, I have some interesting layers and things that are now happening because I've got some wonderful bushes that are going to go here. And then I need to make sure that through those, I've got little streams coming out. And I felt that it was really nice to take my Prussian and my uh, Dogs Purple and kind of make these deep blue shapes that are clearly like a bush shape, more Prussian than anything. And the reason for that is, is that it almost gives them the effect of being maybe in the mist, if that makes sense. Yeah. If I'm trying to say that something sort of is coming out and, and, and is leafy in this space in some kind of way, being able to come in with that, I'll get a little white into that. And if you do highlights, you want to keep them minimal. See how the highlight's there, but it's very soft. Because this plant, this little one right here, this sweetie pie, which is going behind our wonderful bridge, you know, and you can bring in here. You can imply that this is a few places, like this could be up here. I've got lots of purple that are going to be coming up. So you can say, this little plant maybe has taken hold several places in our fantasy garden. There's a little bank of it coming down. Look at that. A little bank of that wonderful fantasy coming down. And then 
we can talk a little bit about some water it's coming down the hill got this little brush I want to be able to oh I see and create these little de delicate little runoffs And maybe this one slides down here. And it's and coming forward is it gets a sloped embankment. See how it's doing? Yeah. These are just doing their little thing. Little bits of water that run in into the water and so those are really fun delicate little details that you're always capable of adding if your brush is super dirty it's a good time to uh rinse out change your water keep those colors clean uh, especially in a piece like this where you're really working a lot of stuff is everybody's stamina holding together very much so All so right. it's and you you change the water color because it makes the murky the murky water can yeah, then it's not as murky. I'm going to put a little of the uh, burnt sienna into my green, and I'm going to get a bit of my yellow. And you can see it's bright, but that little bit of burnt sienna keeps it from being like this green. You can maybe show some of that, like maybe something happened there. And, like, oh. All right get more like into the green as you're coming down and you're just sort of showing the the life and the space around where this water is yeah that just creates a space where the water feels like it's alive it's a subtle mm -hmm. thing but it's a big thing and i like it very much my rock okay <laughs> So this rock too is a bit, I might even take a bit of the yellow ochre and the brown together and get them into the black, making this sort of warmer black to play against the cooler, cooler colors that I've got going on because we have a lot happening here. I'm going to come here and I'm going to maybe Create a random and rough rock texture. The best. Are you rhyming about rocks again? I could. There is no rhyme or reason to the rock. You can get some darker color like the black and deepen that. And then you can also be playing, you know, the, the, the coolness that you could have going on, right, against other things. So, you know, maybe like a little bit of the brown there. So we're just trying to say, oh, hey, this rock is interesting, very interesting, very, very interesting. Okay, so maybe a little of my Prussian blue and my black again. And we'll come back here. We know the bridge is going to be here, and it's going to cast a bit of a shadow. And this whole part back here should be a Titchen shadow. It should be. And then even if you come in and you get a lot of white on there and you're making a very light, light, light highlight, as I am, you know, keep that pressure light. Let a lot of what's underneath show through because rocks have just a ton of personality. I think sometimes it's fun to uh, speckle them. And then, you know, in the speckling, you can be like, really see their character too. Like if you splatter them. We have enough splattering going on on this one, so we're not going to probably do that. Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be really cool if Dwayne painted with us? Who? Dwayne Wayne. Sure. The oh. Rock painted Spe a rock. Speaking for of sure. rocks. For sure. If The Rock painted a rock, no one's going to be upset about that. I think it'd be awesome if he painted. I'm going to grab a little of my dark green and brown, and I'm going to come in and imply that the water side of the rock has a bit of moss. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Just the water side, maybe up here. And it's okay if a little moss kind of grows on it. 
See how it's doing? You can always add a little yellow into that mix to make a slightly rock. brighter moss. Hmm? A little mossy rock. Just dusting. Saying, oh, my goodness, there's just a little moss on this rock. This beautiful rock that I love painting. It makes me so happy to paint, you know, that I'm just adoring in every way. Maybe a little of my Prussian and my phthalo blue and black together because I just like to create a cool blue. Coming under here, really deepening that, making some of these values super dark. As you do, even here. And then even though I know I'm going to layer some just really intensely uh, green uh, phthalo right over it, glazing it. And so the, the green will just catch your eye. And I think I want to go up on the waterfall looking at it. And I'm going to get a little of my impression again. A little of my impression. And I'm going to make sure that I've got some of those little spaces of, you know, things defined. Softly brushing. Coming here. Making sure that these things have the shape I'm wanting. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. uh, we can come back and add some shadows. And sometimes it's even nice, like where parts of the water are hitting, to to create some shape and personality in it. You know? and you can always like reserve some like bright, bright, bright white. What for? Okay, yeah. so if you take like that, and you have the bright, bright white. Okay, there you are. You can come right here and kind of make a highlight at the top of the fall. Maybe like right here. We're saying this is just, you know, maybe a more intense patch of this light. It's catching. I like that. Now I got a gorgeous rock. I can add some moss to it. That's always fun, moss up, mossing up your rock, which yeah. is your cad red and your cad yellow and a little of your burnt sienna. Right. Let, I'm going to make sure I don't have too much extra paint, so I use my rag. I'm going to come in and right in the green, I'm going to just weave in a little bit of this piece of orange. See that? Doesn't that just make it feel like a rock rock? Yeah, just a little, that little color tones. Rocks are colorful. Yeah. Some rocks are colorful. Some rocks are not as colorful. Like this rock here, probably not as colorful. <laughs> but you know, you do what you can do. We'll see. It's it's there. It's having its little moment. It's thinking about things. And down here, it's real fun. So back into that turquoise, right, which is the phthalo blue and phthalo green. And then you can always get a little of your add yellow. You know, come through here. Pulling that down. You know, and working, I like to work a lot of that through here. See, I'm wiggling the brush through. When I come around this side, you'll see me bank left, and then I also like to come forward. So I'll always be like playing those two things against each other. Get a little white, show off our turquoise. I think we need to show off our turquoise. So let's put a little of that bright pop of turquoise in this water. Yeah, those little reflections just sort of happen there. Starting to talk about that. Starting to fall the fall.
And it can be really nice to come in. I'm going to get some white into this. And just wiggle out a little of this sort of churny foam. You know you've got it coming through here. And the churny foam. Churny foam is starting to happen. The beginnings of it anyways. And you're like, oh, hey, you've got some turny foam. And it can be like, I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. You're like, well, how about some right here? And it might be like, sure, that could be helpful. But maybe a little more. So I grab some more white. I know I've got all this happening right here, right? Where these things run down and. Back here. Just a little more. And then right off here, it begins. And it kind of comes here. And maybe I just do some little something happen there. So now that falls starting to fall. I'm going to wipe off my brush, but not rinse it. I'm going to get some nice white into here. But my brush still has just peaks of that stuff in it. Uh, uh, turquoise. Let's add a little bit of a highlight into the space. Bringing a little, another little bump out. You can just bring out little bumps. Find your bump in your stream. Where did you, where did the rock, you know? Worn down. And then right here, it can get really kind of crazy because it's landing there. It's crazy water. <laughs> I feel like it is, but <laughs> it might be the only crazy one. It might just be me. And then just bring that there. I do like it when it kind of curves around this part right here. Because you can just bring that out a little bit like it got pushed out and then it's going to come back. See how it did? Yeah. And I'll just bring a little of the churn of the river, just pulling back into the painting a bit. And then back into the turquoise go we, which is thalo blue, thalo green. What do we like to make? Thalo turquoise, it's our favorite. So we're gonna add a lot of the yellow this time. A smidge of the white. And let's bring some of this bright highlight through our river. Like wonderful green. Look at that. I can brush back this way and brush forward. Hopefully this is helping deconstruct. I got some more of the yellow in there. I, I think it is. Now we got all that in. That is a lot to get in, right? It really is. It's a lot to get in, but you're still doing so good. I'm going to take a little of my blue and my phthalo green together, more to the green. You know, I can come here and you can always like deepen an area. If you lost some of the depth or you need to, you know, change it up. It's not like you can, you can't like keep adding to it, which is what's great. You can keep adding to it. You can keep finding it and refining it and telling more stories about it. Now we've got our little bridge here, which I'm going to do my blue and my phthalo blue and my black and a little white. And this dark, dark gray will be my beginning. 
I'm going to start painting this in. I'm going to connect these two. Now, if you guys are not comfortable freehanding this, and that can happen, remember that you have just the bridge as a traceable as well. Mm. Oh, that's good. Or, and people always forget this, you can go back and grid again. The grid still works. If ever you lose something when you're painting it that you did from a grid, go back and put the grid back in. Hmm. You know, and as I'm going, I can get even, you know, into maybe my yellow ochre. That's a little too much yellow ochre. If I can get my black and some yellow ochre and some white and paint some of this little bridge. And I, look how lightly I'm dry brushing and I'm letting a lot of what's underneath show through, right? Less so where I'm coming across the waterfall because I don't want to lighten it too much because that will take away my contrast. All right, so actually the two areas that I'm going to have much lighter are right here and the other side. Allowing the darker part of the bridge to cross in front of the water. You guys see how that's happening? Yeah. So that's how we're like trying to talk about our stone bridge. I'm pulling some of my paint out. You can always come back and grab a little of your black and come underneath and make sure that this has got a nice shadow. It's clean and the contrast is hot. Always make sure that the contrast is hot. Grab a little white. And if I do put a highlight, I leave the outside contrast edges there so that the dark is what's pulling against the, the white here. Now, the um, I'm going to probably use this. The wood that's coming over this. And I may even help myself by using my chalk pencil. I'm going to say my railing is about this high up right here. It comes across here. And it's going to come down like this. And then it's going to arc over here this way using my chalk pencil. This is a general's chalk, uh, not chalk, general's charcoal white pencil. Mm. And they're economical, and they work really well, and they don't stain up in my paint too badly. So I like them for that very much. Very, very, very much. My black and my brown are the beginning of this. I'm going to thin it out, thin it out, thin it out. And I'm going to ask my beautiful studio assistant for some water. If she can help me out, but she might be deeper in the house than I think. I will go check it out. Yeah, I'm going to be just painting that whole line in with about a quarter of an inch. Um, there you go. You are also a beautiful studio assistant, so. Oh, okay, I don't. I can definitely. Oh, you do. That's crazy. Like a ghost. I'm just coming through here. And what I'm making is a wood railing. This is what this essentially is. You know, I'm not saying it's a structurally good idea to use wood on your waterfall, but it's what I liked. It's what I decided to use. And so that's what you got. We're going to say it's a hardy wood. Let's call it mesquite. Mesquite could hold up against a waterfall really, really well. I feel. For sure. For sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. And I missed my paint again. I don't really use a stay wet palette. Um, so misting is how I control the drawing of my paint on hot days like today. Now right here, you know, I'm going to say that I've got one railing that's going to come down right here. All right. I think see my back. railing coming down? 
zoom in on that railing. And another one that's going to come down right here. There we go. And then these two like to have, I like to give this one a crisscross. Yes, weirdly, this is based on a real bridge in real fall. I mean, it doesn't look anything like the waterfall. It was kind of a just regular waterfall. Now it's like a dream fall. But, you know, if you, ha if you have an issue with the construction of the bridge, it's not me. Don't take it up with me. I don't know. <sighs> there we go. Sorry about it, like going fan crazy in the gritting video. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little, little, ah! Now I'm going to go ahead and also, using my black and my brown, I'm going to make one pull back here. A nice big pull. We will lose some of these to the vines. The reason I paint the whole bridge in is that, you know, I want to be able to be expressive with my vines and playful, and I can't do that if I'm too busy worrying about where the poles are. So if I just get it all in, then I can just whimsically drop vines. And my little heart's content. There's going to be a pole that comes. And this is kind of like, remember, this is kind of like a branch. It doesn't have to be straight, right? Because they're using branches. And then I'm going to bring a little support branch up. And we're going to do a similar thing here. Maybe that one was there. Now, while I've got this, I'll go ahead and maybe thin some of my black paint. I can add a little blue, but I just definitely want to thin my black paint. And I'll come here and make sure, you know, I've got a little bit of this sort of pop of definite, easy to see contrast that's going on. And it will make a difference at a later date, so totally worth having. I'm also going to make sure I've got some contrast kind of coming underneath my pole. See how we're doing? Yeah. So hopefully if you've done acrylic April, this is like kind of like a breeze now. It's okay if it's not. <laughs> if you're like, no, <laughs> no easier. I don't know why we're doing this today. That's okay. Too. But you're probably having fun. And then where this goes kind of under the bridge, I'm going to shade it. And then I'm going to shade this where it goes under the bridge. There we're doing. These little, these little steps that create form, they're a big deal. And we'll go here. And see that helps it be, you know, one, one wood block is in front of the other wood block. Right? And so that's what we've got. And we can create these sort of little shading moments that are super helpful to us when we're trying to talk about our wood bridge. We're about two thirds done. You're wondering where we are in the project. Mm -hmm. We're about two thirds of the way through our project. About two thirds. About two thirds. I'm going to get my little, this is a number four Cambridge and I'm going to grab a little of my, just my, I think my, just my cat red and some of my yellow here and I'm going to get like kind of an orange and I'm going to mix that into my burnt sienna. I'm going to come to the top of this and I'm going to start to imply sort of like a wood texture. See, I'm making this like rough little. Mm -hmm. kind of implication of wood. And this is what we're going to be doing here is just showing how this is sort of this wood against the contrast of that being stone and I'm dry brushing that's how I'm getting it and that's all I actually do to get that 
feels like it should be a lot more than that but yet it's not which is cool and also <laughs> kind of crazy awesome and also kind of cool got this here and we've got all this kind of fun stuff going here and we'll let that draw a bit we can while we're here because the last thing that we're really going to do right is these sort of vines almost because they layer over everything yeah so i'm pretty happy with the water this is yeah, a good time good. to grab anything that i feel like i want like maybe some hard splashes see how we got or any highlights that i feel like needed to be dealt with anything that you know needed that last pop And now I get to do some cool green underneath the stuff. I'm going to take a little of my um, dark green and a little of my burnt sienna again, which I like to do, and a little bit of my cad yellow. And I'm going to begin to talk about a little bush that lives here. I touch my brush down making little leaf marks. See my little leaf marks? Yeah. Little leafy marks. Right, maybe pull this back here and layer this up a bit. Your little leaf marks. Pretty cool stuff. You can like imply little bits of things that have happened here. You know. And I can get a lot more of this right there. I'm just kissing some of these. Not too many of them. You get too many, it gets out of hand on you real quick. And you're trying to say this is sort of under a bridge. So it's not going to catch that much light. I can grab a little of my, my uh, nickel tighten it, or you can grab white. I'm going to grab my nickel tighten it. Because it's going to keep it really yellow green, which is what I'm really wanting. So see, now we've got that little implied bush, right? Yeah. How much do we love that little implied bush? I love that little implied bush. Yeah, I like it. Now I'm going to grab a little of my green here, and I'm going to rub this where it's very dark. See how it is? But it's not going to take the, um, the black away, and then I can get a little of my Prussian, and I'm going to come here as well. And then there's a cool thing I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a little white smidge dip of water and it's going to give me this cool color and I'm going to come along this bank's edge with that and then look I'm going to make a little mist see my little mist see the little mist that's happening yeah I love the little mist it's like I feel like it's such a neat effect such a neat atmosphere of things where I just give a little mist which is just the Prussian blue and white and I go around and I give a little mist here. You need a little mist. We all need a little mist. I can even kind of create a little shadow around this rock as it's doing something. And I can give a little mist right here. Seems reasonable. Where, where there might be little mist. Different than little mist. Very different than little mist. Now I am going to get my sort of green and yellow mixture that I like so much and I need a dark green value of it and I'm going to do this little scribbly stroke so what's a little scribbly stroke that's a it's a scribble original the scribbly stroke well, I mean I see a lot of artists that do a scribbly stroke I don't you know they Just may call it something else I have seen the scribbly stroke before I do not claim to have invented a scribble stroke scribbly stroke is used in conjunction with smidges of paint it often is. That's how you know it's a scribbly stroke. And then I'm going to grab a bunch of my yellow, right? And then some white. And you're going to see that this is quite different than when we do the nickel tighten. It's just a different little scribble. Look at that. A little scribble, or maybe at the top here. Oh, yeah, you need a little scribble too. Just a little bit different under the bridge. That's a strange pop, but. You know, I feel like we went and got it for acrylic April and we can use it. But again, if you just have cad yellow, just hang there. Just right there. 
kind of liking even the second one even better than the first. Because I'm like that in my way. Yeah. Now, I'm going to put out some more Prussian blue and some more Thalo green because I'm running low. Whoa, I did not need that much. Uh, what happened was I squeezed in the middle of the tube too enthusiastically. That's what happened to me. That's how it happened. I got, I got, a, little, I got a little overexcited and I wasted paint. Sip some water. Think a minute. Is everyone doing okay? Are you guys yeah. liking how this it's is, going for you? This has been really great. Like they said, the, the resources are, are, are been great. And everyone's just been echoing how much they really love the format and how this is going. So, oh my gosh, that is really good. It, that is good to read. Not read. Here. John's well, I'm reading, reading it. it. I'm hearing it. I can't yeah. see the chat. Right. I'm going to take a little of my um, quinacridone and a smidge. My yellow's a bit skin, so I'm going to grab a smidge of my yellow because I'm trying to warm this a bit because that'll help it pop. Maybe against the uh, background, and I'll add just the smallest amount of white. You can kind of see that. And then let's go here and uh, make a little wiggle. A little wiggle. of this tiny little almost magic flowers right weird one right there I like planning me yeah, man. imagining how many there are as they grow what happens now when I have that really 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 worked out I'm gonna get some white and I'm going to get a much lighter version of this color. I'm going to come to the top and I'm going to highlight just bits of them. See? Just bits. Just the bits. If you guys like this kind of fanciful, maybe longer, more challenging lesson, you know, let me know if you'd like to see more of them. And I will design some more for the schedule. That's so nice like that. Add a little piece of pink right there. I'm fine if there's a little low flower. Those little tiny touches sometimes are kind of a cool big deal. You know, that's a thing that you can do. I'm going to go you back into it. my my yellow and my cad. Maybe a little bit of my ochre. And I do want to come to the top of this just here and add one more layer of highlight. Now it's all dry. Gotta go that way first. All right. Just a little bit of the wood. Sometimes it makes a difference. And every time you kind of pop that contrast up and it and it pops up a bit, that's kind of I think wonderful. Grass. I have green now, so that's not such a big deal. I'm gonna take a little of my Prussian and a little bit of my phthalo green. And I'm going to begin the, well, that's just hardly even showing. But I am going to begin this sort of implied texture of this grass, which is a stroke, like it comes forward. These are little clumps of grass, if that makes sense. Yeah. And, they're, and the stroke is sort of curved, and they come forward, and, you know, it's, a, it's, it's lovely. And then I'm going to have these little white flowers in there, which are pretty fun. I like doing the little white flowers. I don't know if I left my fluid paint over here. Don't I have to grab it for me? I can get you more. Yay! I think I probably moved it over to my design center. So as I'm going through here, I can come in and I can get into my, my yellow a bit, as you can see. Just a bit. And then I can make, back here, let's say that these are brighter. As I pick some of these up, they won't be the brightest of the grasses that we have, but it's the start, right? You no know, brighter, 
more noticeable, but this part of the painting is a little more in shadow. You definitely want to make sure that you're keeping those values interesting. And then, you know, a little more of the yellow, always nice. There we go. How you guys like your little grasses now? Yeah, they sort of go forward. Yeah. I like them. So many ways to describe your grass. So many ways to describe it. Come here and take that light color and I like some of these little fellows right here. This is very fantasy. So I've clearly got sun plants growing in the shade. And huh. <laughs> if you garden, you're like, what? But that's what it is to be an artist, right? It, this is my garden and it can be better than, than what it, my actual garden would get to do, right? And what my actual garden would get to be about and you can really play with these elements if you want that's kind of wonderful i am delighted by that ah, very like very much now i'm going to uh oh i need some more green over here so i'm gonna like, just like you look over there and you're like, oh, that's a green hole. What I do? I plant some plants. Look at that. It's a plant at a plant. It doesn't require a lot. You can plant plants pretty easily when you need to plant some plants. Just saying. Now, I'm going to take a little of my Prussian and maybe my phthalo blue and some of my dark purple and a smidge of my white. Probably have to put out some more white in half a second. And I'm going to make my darkest color of my vine. So what you've got to do here is you've got to decide what are you showing as your vine grows down. You can see I'm sort of wiggling this stroke. No, this is up here. And I like that the pink and uh, purple on these sort of wisteria sort of blend and meld together. That was super exciting for me. Mm. I am apparently excited by very small things. <laughs> that is one of them. How are we? Very good. This is such a beautiful painting. The color, I really like the blues. The Prussian blue on this is just so amazing. You don't get yeah, to see it, the flowers done like this with, with the Prussian much. It is fun to treat yourself uh, to a more expanded palette. Like I did enjoy... Um, working with a limited palette over acrylic April, but it is fun to be back to a full and totally functioning palette. So I'm just over in the blue and then like, you know, if it blues it up, that's cool because, you know, we're building these bases up of these little spaces where now we're just implying that they come down. And I can, if there's anything, I don't know if I have any questions to answer or hmm, let me if we're see good. Because we're just going to be pulling these blue vines down here and there for a minute. They just, everyone's saying they like the flowers. They were looking, this is really turning out very, very nice. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful to look at and it's a beautiful experience to paint. There's, there's two things you want to think about when you're making art. And right? you're not over mixing on the brush there. You're. you're oh, I'm very loose. You're very loose on this. I'm going to see if I can catch some more of that. Yeah. Let's see. It's just, it's just a very sort of loose, oh. loosey-goosey, little mixy-mixy. And then we'll put some of this here. Definitely pulling that down there. Now it's always all good. Just kind of keeping that going. Sometimes I get more into the blue. Sometimes I get more into the purple all good we just want a deeper value at first 
right? We don't want to get, go into our lightest colors yet. Now maybe this comes up here. And like I said, there was going to be layering here, and so that it's nice to have the green peeking out behind to give it that very grown and integrated kind of look. So I'm definitely working all those cool colors as much as I can. Trying to keep those deep values going. And we're just working this. And coming down. You need a little water. You know, it's okay to grab it. All right, to get a little water. Sometimes I get in there and I forget that it's okay to grab a little water when I'm just trying to do these little dry brushy little moments. I think I'll take some of this blue forward. Where it's going to be. Just working it. Now, I'm going to rinse out. And so I've had that and that's wonderful. Now I'm going to get a little of my purple and I'm going to let a little white get into it. Right? And it's, it's quite, even when it's, it seems dark, it's actually quite bright. Let's see if, like, brighter than that. But that's what we're trying to get into is the sort of, next layer of light see this right here yeah and so it's just quite purple and i'll pull this forward on this bit of the plant i haven't gone into a completely soft purple by any means and i'll come forward on this part of the where it's coming down and and maybe this one is lighter overall as we come forward and I love how these brushes are just like so crazy and yet so fun to play with like I'm a crazy brush right now you feel like you want to paint with me okay I can bring that purple up into this wonderful tree up here because I can because mm. it's my world literally made it up so the thing is it's like you use like references when you're designing pieces like this you find references of elements that you like, and then you create a bunch of little sketches and a bunch of little ideas, and you, you know, catch information on the lighting and how an atmosphere would be, and then you just go to town. That's my feeling. Yeah? Yeah. Now, after this is in like this, which is just this lovely little cacophony of deep purple, right? I can come into my blue, interestingly enough, and get just a little white. Doesn't take a lot on the blue. Because the way this is, it should, yeah, there you go. Should be quite noticeable. And I'm going to kiss some of the little flowers here with a bright pop of blue. Can you see the bright pop of blue? Yeah. So we just bring that down. And it, it isn't everywhere, it's just some pop of blue. Bringing them down. Come here and work a little bit of bright pop of blue. So what you're saying is just making sure that the the form and shape of what I've got going on isn't substantively changed by what I'm doing. Rinsing that out. And while all that's having a bit of a rest, I can do a really fun thing here. I can take a little bit of my Doc's Purple, as you do, mm -hmm. and a bit of my. Uh, Add red as you do. It's not a color people are normally used to seeing mixed. And we're going to begin to lay out this wonderful, beautiful <laughs> baby. Yeah, your little hill over there. Yeah, this little little bit of that burgundy that's coming over the rock. I have lots of, lots of ability to do that. 
you know, and you can get into the magenta with this, which is wild. And then if you pull a bit of the white, you get some extraordinary effects. Like this. Need more purple, you just get more purple. So it's just, there you go. Oh, that's purple. So nice. Isn't that wonderful right here? Yeah. Just super lovely. A little more magenta into it. And a lot more white. I'm trying to like uh, make this almost like feathery little space on these little textures of these plants. Oh. Tell the shape, tell the form. You don't have to tell everything. Just something that says, "Hey, this is this is this cool thing that's happening right here." And I like it. You now you want more purple, you can go more purple, you want more red, you can get right into the alizarin. So they're all going to work quite well together telling that story. Now I will want to make some like little funny details there, but I'll need my fluid paint. So when we get into that, if John can grab that for me. Which color do you need? Oh, white. Just white. Okay. And the reason I want fluid paint is because I want to do some detailing and some dotting, and that's going to help me keep my pigment loads up. Right? So, oh, this is not, I need the big one. I, I think this one is empty. That's it. The not empty one. Always better than the empty one, in my opinion. <laughs> so I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to load up with this wonderful white. And it's super pigmented. I've got the pink right here. All right, this sort of pinky purple. And then I can come here and tell these little, look at these little stories. I like some little, gives a different little leaf shape, doesn't it? And it's closer to us, so we can kind of get away with it. And it's just about leaving these little, little crazy little, I don't know, it's really fun for me. really pretty that little accent there you've done yeah it's just enjoy myself you know enjoy yourself a little bit of an accent it really helps All right, and while I'm here because I can I'm going to take a little of my white and it's okay to start it with a little of the Prussian blue and the reason is, is that that way you've got two kind of values of white. So some of them seem deep in the plant and some of them seem more in sunlight. So this is like this little white flowering thing that it could do. Kind of fussy, but I really like it. And who doesn't want to be fussy on occasion? Oh, yeah. Little fussy dots. Lots of little fussy flowers. And they're not on stems, right? They're like out in the grass. They're little blooms that have happened. They're you know, little bits of kind of like maybe a spring grass bloom like they do where they have a like little weird flower in the spring. Mm -hmm. Often shade plants have these white flowers. And that's always fun to play with. You can use uh, the dotting tool here if you like. You can use a toothpick. 
lots you can use. I'm just using the tip of my brush because that's working. No, but you're just planting some flowers. Planting them happily. We're literally almost done. So crazy. Does anyone feel like we should be almost done by now? It's so no, I mean, like I'm just, I'm, I can't believe it's, it's, we're that close. We really are though. We're bringing some up over here over the rock because that really helps them show. No, you can bring them down here. Come off the edge. Get the little size dot. Your embankment could have a lot of these. It could have less of these. You know, it's really just about like where you're at. And I find on little flowers like this, it's nice to put them in a secondary place. Go over here to. So it implies that, you know, maybe a couple of these little plants are kind of growing together. Yeah. Have a, oh, across the river. That's a bit more of a bloom than I wanted. So I'm going to just remove it have to even remove all of it. I just got to remove some of it. <laughs> so some of it needed to go. Not all of it needed to go, but some of it definitely needed to go. Isn't that fun when you see the two flowers with each other? Yeah. It's just really delightful. Now, the last wow. little bit, the pink. Yay! I have enough of this left. I'm kind of skinned, but we'll see how it goes. All right, so more quinacridone can go out. Initially, I'm inclined to use the quinacridone and maybe even the alizarin is my first initial inclination. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to. Begin to work the idea of where these pink flowers are going to be, especially the areas where they, you know, where, where it might be clustered up enough to have shadow, if that makes sense. We came up a little bit of uh, the thing. Maybe this like could have another little outgrowth and then it kind of comes down here because they're layered. As layers. Yeah. Layers happen. They make it better. They can. I think in this case they totally will. And we're just building up those layers, building up that space. Some there. Definitely I'll want some there. Now I can always come and get a little white. And I can just be like, hey, that right there. Oh, hey. Maybe a little more magenta into that. Oh, there it is. Oh, yeah. A little more magenta. Every time I grow these, I just I move up and down the embankment. <laughs> hmm. Because, you know, it's just really weird, but you get in a very meditative state, and you may find, like... You really do, yeah. One time your flowers fall one place, and another time they fall another place. That is okay. That's all right. If you need to come back with a dark color, you've got, you know, your, your purple and your burgundy. You can always come back in and see darken some of these. Is that what we can do? Yeah. Creating like little shadows or depth within the cluster, which is also super helpful. I like it. Mm-hmm. A little bit of that. Oh, I don't know where all that water came from. That was a lot, but...
making some little auditions. Little happy moments that could be going on. Let's put some of those over here. Well, got some of our magenta and I'm gonna come here and tell that story. That's fun. Because I'm always just looking for like where does it where does it find its way, you know? Here that comes up a bit. Ooh, I like that. But you know, every once in a while you'll be painting and be like, oh, that's nice. Mm hmm. Lovely of you. And then they just keep growing. That's what happens to me. They just keep growing. They just keep growing and growing. Like they do, like they may want to. And again, we know we can get into the purple and the alizarin and make that sort of like, oh, you need a little shadow here? No problem. I got a shadow for you. Wherever you need the depth, you got depth. You got depth. You need depth, you got depth. That's so amazing. That turned out really nice. Yeah, I'm thinking one last little one last little bit of something. So I'm gonna take my you can use your yellow if you don't have the nickel tighten it. I'm gonna take a bit of my quinacridone. Grab some of this. See how that goes. See that? That's what I'm talking about. So that's just kind of an interesting play on color, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. But again, you could just use your yellow. Please don't like go, oh, I can't do the painting. I don't have a color or another color. It's just really values the most important thing. Everything else after that is just playfulness. And we're all up for play. Wow, that turned out great. Just adding a little highlights here and there. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to get this color. Maybe a little more quinacridone into it. And a bunch of my white. See if this won't be kind of helpful. And some of these. Make some like these little light light flowers. It also sort of inform the drip. Oh yeah. Don't have to do it. Just the thing we can do. Sometimes there's just stuff we can do. We don't have to do it. You know, we get to paint. We don't have to paint. So. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times people are like, do I have to do that? I'm like, no. I mean, like, what? I'm not, I'm not coming to your house to take your, like, brushes away if you don't do what I'm doing. You know, you got to make yourself happy in this process. You know, you got to find your own space in it, right? But I do think a nice little pop of highlight, it makes me happy. So I showed you what made me happy, and then you do. And I also think that there's something between the contrast of the types of uh, brush strokes it is. Does yeah. that make sense? I think so. You know, like like one type of brush stroke is like one way, and then 
these hard edges versus these soft edges really play an interesting storyline as well. So why not be playful? Well, there we go. That's what I think we needed. Maybe just a few here. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It's just it's just about like you know trying to make sure that it feels like interesting and you know if you want more of one color you just come get right into it and then you can be like oh no let's carry some of that pink down and make this a little bit more okay we're done yeah you can always be like is that does that make me happy do i feel like that's what i was trying for if you're like oh yeah that's definitely what i was trying for then you nailed it okay I feel like, you know, we've seen, we've sung, we've done it, we've sung the song. I think it turned out pretty good. We're ready to sign the painting. Ready to sign. Yeah. All right. Let's grab our little brush, get it into our fluid paint, and come over here because I think this is the most passive place I can sign it without, like, impacting my design. And I try to look for those. Sometimes I do great, sometimes not so much, but it is something I think about. This is, do not, I love this. This is your fantasy garden. And this is kind of the idea of how you create these things and turn around. Woo! Oh, look at that. Dude, we did that live on YouTube. Whatever. That was awesome. <sighs> so hopefully everything is like this garden. It's blooming. It's coming up flowers. You're feeling the spring. You're feeling the joy of the water coming down the mountain. Be good to yourself. Be healing to your own heart. Be good to each other. Say something kind today to somebody else. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.